Pirates and Giants tied up at one. Bottom five. Frazier slices that one into left field. He's on first base as the go-ahead run. Next batter hits a little foul ball, and Dubon's tracking it down. He says, I got it. I got it right into the palm of his hand. Secures it with his other hand. Bounces into the net just to have a little bit of fun. Makes the catch. One out. Runner on first batter goes, oh, oh damn. And it's all smiles over here. Giants are doing a mustache thing. I don't know if you guys have caught on. Giants are doing a little bit of a mustache thing. Got a little bit of a mustache thing going on in San Fran. Next batter, he slices one to right. And Frazier's going to go first to third. Love a good first to third on a single, like good base running. Now you got the go-ahead run on third base, a sack fly sends him home to give him the lead, but they run the old Little League first and third rundown. Let's see if something happens play. Uh, they're bad, so maybe they think that's going to work out better than a sack fly. They trick a room, replay. The gang gets together. They're watching some baseball, chomping some gum, seeing some replays. Now look at this. He's running him back. He's got an easy out here, caught stealing. That means that the runner on third can't score on a sack fly anymore. He just got to get this guy out. He looks the runner back on third. He's doing his job. And then he's going to pull the trick, fake throw, throw to third. I think if we were doing like a spy movie and we were like risk analysis and then some spy shit and green text dropped down, it was like, and it was like runner on third, two outs versus runners on first and third, one out. The percentage would say, just get the easy out at first, man. Because also... I mean, this is a pretty risky play, and the runner on third, Frazier, didn't really fall for it. It's not like, you know, usually after this throw, after this fake throw, the runner on third takes another step home in case the first baseman botches it and he can go home, but he didn't really fall for it. But it's a perfect spin and throw by Dubon, so I'm not going to knock it, and they did get the call. Look. Perfect on the money throw, but so much margin for error and then it to be totally not worth it at all. The grounds crew in the yellow shirt calls him safe from behind, but the ump says out. So they're watching the replay and this is like the best footage we have because both these broadcasts, I guess, just don't use cameras. And I don't know. Did he get his hand in? You the, the, the gloves on him there. Is he touching? Is he not touching? No idea. It's backwards, so he's not touching first there. He's not touching first there. Maybe he's touching first there, but also the glove is touching him there. Who knows? Terrible angles. Be better the broadcast crew and get it right. So the umps just say, yeah, sure, we got it right. He's out. Yeah, you're a badass play by me. Probably a play you, you kind of like dream about. You're like, you know, if this comes to me, I'm going to do this. The next pitch is a little bit of a pass ball. So if there was a runner on third, still, he might have scored. So maybe the play was... Worth it, but that's the fallacy of the predetermined outcome. You can't really play that game in baseball because, I mean, you could play that literally after every single pitch if you want to do that. So anyway, then the runner moves to second, and then Wood is going to get out of it with a strikeout, and bam, bam, bam. I don't know who won this game, but I know that that play was fun. And then I was wondering if he goes to the dugout, and he's all celebratory, and a coach pulls him aside, and I'm wondering if he's saying, hey, man, real cool play, real cool play, but, you know, probably not worth it because if anything slightly goes wrong or the call is incorrect, not worth it. 